Good morning and welcome back. Um, we will be reading chapter four in King of the Dollhouse. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe or give me a thumbs up or leave me a comment. Also, if you want to leave a name of somebody that's watching, um, whether it's your child or you or your pet, I'll do a shout out, let me know, I'll say hello. Um, just like now, I wanna say hello to Stormy, my little furry friend. It's a kitty, Kikumi, hi Stormy. So this is now King of the Dollhouse by Patricia Clapp, chapter four. The soft summer day slipped by, King Bora Bora bustled about the dollhouse, keeping it shining, clean, and very neat. And Ellie tried hard to keep her own room as reason least reasonably clean and fairly neat. However, she much preferred playing with the peanut butter babies and teaching them to use little plates and spoons, and she was delighted when their manners began to improve. Sometimes they would sit in a wiggly row on the edge of some of the upstairs floors, dangling their fat little legs over the front of the dollhouse and watching Ellie as she brushed her hair, or made her bed, or hung up her clothes. And when they sat that way, it was quite easy to see that they were really, were 11 of them, all the same size, small. Ellie's mom spent more and more time in her study and seemed very pleased with the way her story was coming along. There's Ellie, probably thinking about those peanut butter babies. Miss Pinkletoe was having. If she noticed that the peanut butter and raisins and chocolate chip cookies seemed to run out more often than usual, she didn't mention it. Ellie spent more hours watching the peanut butter babies playing and sleeping in their little dollhouse or eating their meals and trying hard not to put their hands into the plates full of peanut butter. How do you do tell the peanut butter babies apart? Ellie asked the king one day. They all look the same to me. I don't tell them apart, King Bora Bora said. They all look the same to me too. And there they all are. And this used to be my book, so when I was little, I started coloring them in and then I stopped. <laughs> so there they all are, sitting on the edge of the dollhouse. But don't they have any names? I believe their mother, my dear queen, did name them when they were born, but I can't seem to recollect what she called them. I shall be happy to ask her the next time she turns up, if you like. Oh, do. Do you think she will come home soon? Asked Ellie. It's impossible to say. On one occasion, she stayed away for a full 10 days, and that was during her aviation period. Aviation? You mean she flew airplanes? More like gliders, really. She had a good friend, a sparrow, who used to fly her royal, royal highness up into the maple trees. Then the queen would sit on a maple key and would spin, come spinning down to earth. It made her quite giddy, and she seemed to really enjoy it. That sounds like such fun, said Ellie, hugging herself with pleasure at the thought. Was a maple key really big enough for her to sit on? Her royal highness is quite has always been petite, said the king. Her head comes up to just my shoulder. With his hand, he showed Ellie how big the queen was. I guess you wish she would hurry back, Ellie said. It must be hard caring for 11 children while your wife is out mouseback riding. Not at all, said the king. I am much better suited to it than the queen, and she would be the first to agree. Oh, I do wish she would come home. She sounds very exciting, said Ellie. Ellie didn't have to wait long. That very night, as she was about to drop off to sleep, she heard a tiny scurrying noise off to, on the, from the floor, and the king must have heard it too, because two or three of the dollhouse lights were quickly turned on, and in their glow, Ellie saw a rushing little form race out of the shadows, shadowy corner of her room, gallop up to the dollhouse, and sh stop short. Whoa, said the small, tiny sort of voice, and suddenly there was the queen, gallant and beautiful, on mouseback. Looking over the edge of the dollhouse at the sound of her voice, the king broke out into a smile. My love, he called. Welcome home. How nice to see you. Wait a moment. I'll come down and open the door. As King Bora Bora ran down the dollhouse steps to the first floor, Ellie stared at the queen. And as the king had said, she was petite, barely more than four inches tall, with a beautiful spun gold hair that she wore in a bun on top of her head to hold her crown in place. Her long gown was of the palest blue, girdled with silver cobweb, and on the heels of her golden slippers, she wore tiny spurs. Ellie was enchanted. The queen ran up the little steps to the front of the dollhouse, her cheeks faintly flushed from the exercise and her eyes shining. Oh, look, there they are. There she is on her mouse back, and there's the king, all excited to see her. Ellie tactfully looked away while the king greeted his wife and led her into the living room where she heard her voice. Ellie, he called out, are you awake? Oh yes, she said and slipped out of bed. I would like you to meet her royal highness. The couple stood in the middle of the living room, their hands linked, looking very regal indeed. N Ellie knelt on the fuzzy floor in front of the dollhouse, her heart just beaming with happiness. Gazelda, my love, said the king, this is Ellie. Our, I suppose we might call her our landlady. 
The queen inclined her head graciously and smiled. We are so grateful for all you've done for the king and the royal infants, she said. And her voice was as light and clear as a morning bird song. And for allowing us to enjoy your for delightful house, I think we have rarely had better quarters. I'm glad you like the house, your highness, said Ellie. Ah, look at them. There they are. How cute. And Ellie peeking in on them. Ellie said softly, was your mouth hunt successful? Indeed it was. I would never indulge in a blood sport, you understand. We always release the moss the moment they are brought to the ground. It was simply the thrill of the chase that excites me. The king turned blue, turned the blue velvet wing chairs around so he, it faced Ellie and the king and gestured for the queen to sit down. You must be weary, my dear, he said. All those long hours of writing. Oh, Bora Bora, my sweet, weary, you know me better than that. I am not tired at all, but if I may be truthful, I am frightfully hungry. Hungry. Would there be anything at all in the kitchen? Oh, how thoughtless of me, said King Bora Bora, and hid his head lightly with his hand, knocking his crown awry. Of course, sit here, my love. I shall fetch you something immediately. And off he hurried through the dining room into the little kitchen where Ellie and the queen could hear him moving about briskly. Gracefully, the queen seated herself in the wing chair, her pale blue skirt falling in gentle folds. His majesty is such a perfect husband, she told Ellie in confidential tone. There were those who thought us ill-matched when we married because I am so fond of adventure, and the king is such a homebody. But it has been a very happy union. I am a terrible housekeeper, but the king is very good at it and actually enjoys it. And of course, I do all the mending and make the children's clothes. Sewing is my one task my husband is not adept at, while well, I am very creative. The whole thing works out really extremely well. She glanced up as King Bora Bora returned with a little tray on which was a plate holding several cookie crumbs, a raisin sliced neatly into quarters, and a folded bit of paper napkin tucked underneath. Oh, thank you, my love, she said. This looks delicious. The king set the tray beside the wing chair and seated himself on the dollhouse sofa, watching his wife with pleasure as she ate. Will you be staying long, your highness? asked Ellie. The queen wiped the corners of her mouth with the napkin. A few days, I expect. I want to make fresh suits for the children, and I have some new bedtime stories to tell them. <gasps> and then, Ellie ventured. Oh, I never know, my dear, said the queen said. At any moment, I am apt to become restless, and then I must be off again. Please don't hurry away, Ellie said. I do so want to get to know you. There are one or two problems, however. Yes, said the queen. Well, perhaps your husband will explain it if explain to you the best thing to do if either of my parents soon approach the room. The king nodded understanding. You are referring to the hall closet, of course. Yes, I shall acquaint her highness with our hiding place. It has been a it will appeal to her sense of excitement if there is anything else. Well, there is. It's the um, the queen's um, steed. For a moment, the little queen looked puzzled. Then she smiled. Oh, you're speaking of silver lightning, my mouse, are you not? What about him? A spirited beast, she said, looking towards her husband. There's the little queen sitting in her chair, eating her little snack. It's just, well, I'm not sure my mother will like having a mouse in the house, said Ellie. She's not very fond of mice. What a pity, the queen murmured, but that can be easily taken care of. She arose, brushing the cookie dust from her gown, and going quickly out the front door around down the steps, she went to her mouse, who was standing quietly in a ray of light from the living room, slipped off his bridle, deftly unbuckled the little saddle, putting them both over her arms. She whispered something into its ear and then slapped it lightly on the rump, whereupon it turned and galloped back into the shadows which had come, and the queen watched it go, and then went back into the dollhouse, dropping the saddle and bridle into the corner of the hall. I've sent him off to forage for a day or two. He will come back when I call him. Going to her husband, she placed a tiny hand on his shoulders. I shall go up and see the babies and then go to bed myself. All that invigorating fresh air has made me a trifle sleepy. The king took his wife's hand and kissed it in a very romantic fashion. Of course, my love. Run along. I shall take the tray and tidy up the kitchen and I will be up in a bit. They both turned to Ellie. If you will excuse me, the queen said. Of course, it has been lovely meeting you, your highness. I do hope you stay a long time. Thank you, Ellie. A few days at least. Good night, my dear. Good night, Ellie whispered, and she watched a moment longer as the queen ran like thistle down up the stairs and entered the room where the baby slept. And as she leaned over and kissed him gently, the king carried the tiny tray into the kitchen, and Ellie herself got up from the fuzzy rug and climbed into bed. And a few moments later, the room was in darkness. And that is the end of that chapter. We will start chapter five soon. And um, I hope you enjoyed the adventures and continue to come back to hear more.